Andre, do you want to build a snowman? Come on, let's go and play. I never see you anymore. Come out the door, it's like you've gone away. We used to be best buddies, and now we're not. I wish you'd tell me why. Do you want to build a snowman? It doesn't have to be a snowman. Go away, Andre. Okay, bye. Do you want to build a database? Or make a bot that orders pizza? I think some coding is overdue. I've started talking to the bullions on the walls. It gets a little lonely, all these empty stacks, just watching the hours take by. What's up guys, Andre here from Markets and Data, the place where I help you find data for your markets and markets for your data. Now, if you haven't hit the subscribe button down below, please hit it faster than Elon Musk secured funding for his one company, Tesla. Anyways, I'm sorry for being gone so long and I really wish I could spend more time with you, but unfortunately I've been working on this other business idea of mine, which is codeportraits.com. Now, what you can do on codeportrait.com is that you go onto the website, you upload any code that your favorite code is, and you can turn it into a piece of art, which you can hang up on the wall like this. So I did that, and I think it looks pretty chic and cool. So I would like you to go check it out and let me know what you think and your thoughts and opinions about it. Now let's go ahead and just hop straight into this video and I'm going to show you in this video how you can make a database manager so you can store any data that you find online. Me personally, I like to store prawns data in my database after I get done watching Gordon Ramsay's cooking channel. Anyways, let's go ahead and just hop straight into making this database manager using Python and SQLite 3 right now. Oh my god, I can't believe this just happened because I've never seen anything like that. That was crazy. Anyways, let's hop into this coding video and let's go. One of the first things that we want to do is we're going to just create a new file and call it dbmanager.py where the DB manager is going to be housed. Next, we're going to start importing some stuff. We're going to import uh, SQLite 3. Then from SQLite 3, we're going to import operational error and integrity error. Then following, we're going to import OS and also import our hopes and dreams while we're at it. Next, we're going to define our class as the DB manager. And inside the class, we'll, we'll have a class variable called con. And for now, we're going to set it equal to none. So con will stand for the connection of the database that we will be passing to it. So next, let's define our init method. And inside, we're going to have the variables db name and dict output equal to false. Dict output will basically dictate, no pun intended, the type of output that SQLite 3 will be giving us when we want it to give us the, our output in dictionary form, this dict output will be true. Now, the very unique thing about the DB manager is that we wanted to uh, connect to a database when we enter the DB manager. And once we exit it, we're, the DB manager will exit out of the database, just like that one night stand that knows how to automatically exit once you leave for work. So inside of our enter method, we're going to say self.con is equal to sqlite.3.connect self.db name. And it automatically will create a new database once this line of code is ran. Then we're going to say if self.dict output and we're going to say self.con.row factory is equal to sqlite3.row. And this will give us our output and dictionary form whenever we request it instead of the regular tuple or list form. Then we're going to finish off the exit method by saying def exit, and we're going to call this method on itself. And the variables are going to be exc type, exc val, and exc dot underscore tb. And we're not really going to do anything particular with those variables because that's just Python's way of interpreting the exit method. So we're going to exit the whole database by saying self.con.close and finishing that off completely whenever we exit our database. 
All right, inside our tables at .sql file, we're going to make some structurally secure tables just like IKEA because once we're using them, we really don't want them falling apart whenever they are halfway through their life cycle. So inside of the table, I'm going to say, uh, I want a contact ID, a first name, last name, email, and phone, and contact ID will be the primary key of the table. Now remember, the primary key is very unique to the table and it cannot be the same primary key for two rows inside of a table. So I usually like to put either a ID, which is auto incremented or just a date stamp. Next, I'm going to create another table just for fun. It's going to be named IG user. And in it, I'm going to put username, followers, posts, and following. And just to remember that you do need to specify what type of data fields those variables are, uh, either text, integer, uh, a blob, or date time, and so on. And just so we don't forget, I'm going to insert a primary key, IG ID. And I'm again going to auto increment it because we ain't got no time to auto increment it ourselves and we don't really want to worry about having to do that later on. Now, we can hop over back over to the DB manager file and write down some code that will create our tables inside of the database using Python. All right, now inside of DB Manager, we can define the create tables method, and we're going to pass the explicit parameter SQL table file to it, where the SQL table file will be basically drawn from inside of your directories. And inside, we're going to say with open SQL table file as read as f, we're going to try self con execute f dot read for the file that we're just now opening with the open method and we're going to accept an operational error for whenever the tables already exist in the database because we don't want to break our code later on whenever the tables have already been created inside of the database. Now let's define our insert rows method by passing an explicit variable called table name and also some quarks. Notice little stars in front of quarks, they basically mean that Python will unpack your dictionary items whenever it is passed into that method. Don't worry, I'll show you how we can use that later. So let's write out our SQL statement by saying insert into a table column values that we want to insert and we're going to call the method dot format on that string. Now the beauty about SQL and Python is that Python will give you the tuples that SQL requires uh, to execute inside of its code. So we're going to use the tuples from the quarks that we pass as the keys and the tuples from the quarks that we pass as the values. And then we're going to finalize our SQL statement by trying to execute it in a try statement by saying con dot cursor.execute SQL. And just like any good marriage, you have to always pretend that you're committed. And that's why we're going to say self.con.commit and accept any integrity errors arising from duplicated primary keys inside of the SQL table. And whenever we have duplicated primary keys, we're just going to print an error saying that unique value already exists in DB. And this won't enter any of the information that we tried to pass via the method into our database. Next, let's make the get rows method, but bear with me, this method is about as long as my tube socks were in high school, so I'm going to try to get through it fairly quickly. We're going to define the get rows method, and inside the explicit parameters we'll have table name again, then param is equal to uh, the string of one equals one, because we're going to pass some parameters into our SQL so that we can order our data later uh, how we feel like. Then we're going to say fetch last is equal to false to allow us to get the last entry that we added to our table. So inside of the params variable, we're going to say param if type param is not list, then else and dot join and we're going to put a list for x for x and param. So that will allow us to basically string all of the parameters that we have and param from our explicit parameter that we pass into our method. And this will allow us to get multiple items from our database table. Then we're going to pass everything into our SQL statement and we're going to format the SQL string with the table name and the parameters that the method is going to have inside of it. Next, we're going to try to execute everything in one go by saying c is equal to self.con.cursor.execute SQL. And if we want to output in dictionary form, we're going to say if self.dict output, then the query will be the list of dictionary rows for row and c.fetchall. And if not, the query will be c.fetchall. Next, if we're requesting last item with this method, and we're going to 
type in fetch last uh, return query uh, minus one, which will be the last row that was added to our table. And if that is false, then we're just going to say return query altogether. Next, we're just going to quickly wrap up our SQL whenever the SQL code that we wrote is broken. And so our program will notify us that something is wrong with the code that we wrote. And we're just going to basically raise another operational error saying that we cannot execute the SQL query as intended. And that is pretty much it for the DB manager class. Okay, so let's go ahead and test everything by saying if name is equal to main, and then DB will be equal to the string dot OS dot set, which will be formatted into the la 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 dot SQL. Then we're going to say table script is equal to the same uh, dot os.sep formatted tables.sql and with our db manager we're going to open the database that we just defined and give it some dictionary output is equal to true as manager then we can use the mngr to create the table and the tables will be created from the table script that we specified before and now let's go ahead and open the file directory right here and we see that the db la 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 dot sql has been created and we can move on to try and to write some rows to our database with some arbitrary data so i'm just going to randomly define some data say uh, v is equal to the dictionary with the items first name last name email and phone just randomly uh, selected from the top of my head and we're going to say db manager dot insert row as equal to table name as equal to contacts and now we're going to use the quarks that we defined inside of the insert rows method from earlier by specifying it with the two stars uh, in front of the v next we're just going to get all the data from the database by saying print manager dot get rows and from the table contacts and then the parameters which will specify how the data is retrieved from the database table will be a list of parameters and the list will say first name like uh, hander in quotes and the second parameter will be contact id is greater than two so once we run everything we see that the data has been added successfully and now that we can just sort the data by contact ID to make sure that everything is in there, we see that the database does return the data that we put inside of the tables from before. And we hit the button a few more times, we see that the data is being successfully written into the database. Okay, now, so for one more round, I'm going to show you how you can verify the data manually using your terminal. So here are some commands that you can input into your terminal to make sure that your data has been retrieved and has been written successfully. We're going to say SQLite 3 and we're going to open our database la 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 the SQL file. Then we're going to say dot tables to make sure that the contact and IG user tables are inside. Then we're going to say dot headers on and dot mode columns to properly format the data whenever the data is retrieved from those tables. Next, we're going to use the same SQL statement from inside of our Python text file by saying select star from contacts, everything. And as you see, all the data that we have written in Python is now inside of the database here as well. And that's pretty much how you do it. And just to make sure that there's no excess data written to IG user, we can verify that with select star from IG user. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for building out the database manager. I had a lot of fun doing it with you and I wish there was more that we could do on it. But for now, I'm just going to leave the code up on GitHub so you can go and check it out, make proposals to it and changes as you would like and also use it for your projects. And also don't forget to check out codeportrait.com to let me know what you think of the website and your thoughts and ideas about the project. So I'm really sad to see you go. But I'll catch you guys in my future videos. So long and take care.